Can you answer these true and false statements about active transport? Get ready with the pause button. I'm going to give you the answer after each statement. Number one, active transport requires energy. This is an easy one. This is true. Whenever I think active, I think energy. Number two, active transport moves molecules from high to low concentrations, or in other words, with the concentration gradient. This is false. Active transport usually moves things from low to high concentrations against their concentration gradient. Number three, active transport does not involve membrane proteins. This is false. Active transport almost always uses membranes and membrane proteins, at least in some way. Number four, endocytosis and exocytosis are considered forms of active transport. Yep, these are types of active transport, and they're the, probably the most common. Number five, active transport stops when equilibrium is reached. This is a tough one. Think of the role of active transport in our cellular processes. This is false. The whole goal of active transport is pretty much to stop equilibrium. So this statement is false. Usually active transport creates this concentration gradient, which our cells use in some way. Number six, after exocytosis, the vesicle completely disintegrates in the cytoplasm. This is always a tough one for my students. They think that this one is true, but this one's false because the vesicle usually merges with the plasma membrane, once it expels its content. Number seven, vesicles are membrane bound organelles that transport materials around the cell. This one's true. And number eight, endocytosis can decrease the surface area of the plasma membrane. Remember that endocytosis takes materials in and envelops a membrane around them. So since the membrane is being used to transport things into the cell, it will decrease the overall surface area of the cell membrane.